All right, can you guys see that? Looks good? All right. So <laughs> I, I do wanna say um, a huge thank you to everyone that has participated so far and really upped their marketing. When I started this, it was, you know, really just to get into the collaborative workspace and, and have some accountability. And I think it's really done that for our executives. So I'm super excited to, to get going with this series, finish this, and then, you know, down the road, start another one. I think they're really helpful. Um, today, we're going to be talking about TikTok. I promise it's not scary. It's... I, I have a lot of people that, you know, are, are very worried about it or don't want to get into it, feel like it's not for them. And I will be sharing that it might not actually be for you. And there are some reasons as to why it might not be for you, but we'll get into that. So this is the plan for today. We're going to talk about what TikTok is. We're going to go over why or why it might not be for you. I'm going to share some success stories directly from our executives who have used TikTok. I'm gonna share the elements of creating a TikTok. I'm gonna share some ideas and I wanna hear your ideas on maybe some TikTok videos that you've seen that you liked that you wanna create yourself or some ideas that you've had just of your own content that maybe can be turned into a TikTok. And then we're gonna have a live demo from our very own Herbert Hernandez. So let's well, get I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so what is TikTok? Well, TikTok is a short form video based app. It has 3 billion downloads as of today. It has 1 billion active users as of 2021. And what I think is also important is to look at the stats. I know a lot of people think that TikTok is simply for 18 year olds and what have you. And yeah, there is a demographic between 18 and 24 that's huge on TikTok, but you're also looking at a huge demographic of 25 to 34 year olds. That's where you get into first time home buyers, young families, they're also there. So if we look at the stats, 24% of the global audience on TikTok is women aged 18 to 24. 18% of the global audience is also men aged 18 to 24. But 31% of TikTok is aged 25 to 34 years old. And 29% of its active users, 1 billion active users, open the app every single day, which is crazy. Now, we can see 0.1% of TikTok users are only using TikTok. So those that are on TikTok are elsewhere. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, et cetera. But if you're someone that is sharing videos or wants to get into sharing videos, TikTok might actually be the place to start. So why it might be for you is you're looking to increase your currently active online presence. If you're already on Instagram, you're already on Facebook, you already have your email drip campaigns and your e-newsletters going, you've got your YouTube channel set up. If you're already active on three or four platforms and you're looking to expand, TikTok is going to be that one for you. If your sphere is on TikTok, so if you're looking at your audience on Instagram and Facebook, and they're posting reels and they're sharing their TikTok videos on their Facebook pages. General idea is that they are on TikTok. One of the things that Ray and I were talking about is her sphere and who she follows on Instagram and who follows her on Instagram. And it's a ton of people she went to school with. It's a ton of her sister's friends. And all these people are on TikTok. So you really want to meet your audience where they are. If you already have high engagement on your videos elsewhere, you're talking Instagram reels, Facebook reels, YouTube videos. If your sphere is already watching these videos, TikTok is another place to be putting it to increase that engagement. And one thing that no one really talks about, it's kind of like a hack, is TikTok can actually be used simply as an easy and free video editing system. 
So you don't necessarily have to be posting on TikTok, but if you're looking for a free and easy video editing app, there's a way that TikTok can actually be used for that, which is cool. Now, why it might not be for you is that your sphere of influence is not there. When we talk about sphere marketing, we're talking about marketing to those who already know you and those that you already share connections with because they're going to be your biggest promoters. So if your sphere is nowhere near TikTok and they're on Facebook and they're on LinkedIn, then you need to ensure that your marketing on Facebook and LinkedIn is skyrocketed before you even start thinking about TikTok. We, when we talk about, you know, starting new apps and new profiles and all of that, I don't want to send you guys into a, a huge like tunnel of, of new ideas and new this and new that if the items that you should be working on are, are not set up for success yet. If you still have the task of going through your CRM, updating your drip campaigns, updating your e-newsletters, if those are things that are still on your tasks list, I want you to put TikTok to the side for right now. I want you to focus on your main objectives before you kind of start adding to your marketing plan. Does anyone have any questions right now? I think we're good. So I wanted to talk about some success stories. And these are three of our executives right here. So Herbert started video marketing, I think probably a couple months ago. And when he started video marketing, you usually get about 50 to 200 views, depending on the type of video and your audience and whatnot. As Herbert continued marketing and, and doing the videos and all of that, he found really great traction, so much so that two of his videos are now in the uh, almost 2,000 view category and other videos now that his profiles have traction are gaining up to 800 views on the regular, which is very cool. And from that, from his video sharing, he's actually had, you know, people at jujitsu come up to him and say, you know what, we might, we're not selling right now, but we're loving the videos. We're loving the content. You're going to be our realtor when we sell. So just having the consistency and, and meeting your sphere where they are is super important because you will get leads from it. We also have Bunny, who unfortunately she can't be with us today, but I think last week I shared this as well, her son's friends are now seeing her as a real estate expert through her videos that she's posting. They're connecting with her business profiles to, you know, she's talking to first time home buyers through her videos and it shows. Hey, Angelina, how are you? We also have Austin from North Bay who does extremely well. And one of the things he does extremely well are videos. Now, Austin has a great TikTok profile. He's super active. He's super active in his community and that really shows. But one of the things that I noticed is that his comment section, because his sphere of influence is on TikTok and they're you know, friends with him, followers of his, they're commenting on his TikToks and those comments are testimonials to the type of realtor that he is. So people are now going on his TikTok and seeing, oh, this video has, you know, five comments. I wonder what they are. And you click on them and it's all talking about, you know, oh, loved my experience working with Austin, great realtor, best realtor in North Bay. Like just these testimonials from people that know him and have worked with him that are seeing his videos. And that just brings up like a whole other subject of gaining your stellar reputation of, of continuing that on a new platform. So I thought that was really cool and shout out to Austin for just like his continued engagement in videos. They're really, really great. Now, when we're talking about TikTok, it is a social media app. So any type of social media app will have very, very similar setup and elements that you want to be talking about. So first of all, the video based app is downloadable in the app store on your phone. I haven't. Has anyone used TikTok on your desktop before? 
just on your laptop or desktop. No, I, I think most people use it on their phone. It's a lot easier when you're shooting content just to upload it that way. So once you download it, one of the things you're going to need, much like Facebook or Instagram, is a username. Now, a username will kind of filter in the same way to your social profiles um, as anything else. So you're going to link it to your website. You're going to link it to your Realtor.ca profile, stuff like that. If you have a link tree, TikTok is a great space to put that. Um, but you want to have consistency in your marketing which means you're going to be choosing, you're gonna be setting up a username that is the same as your other marketing. So for example, Ina, as part of our brokerage, Ina has her Instagram as Realtor Ina. So my advice to her would be your TikTok username should be Realtor Ina. When people are searching your name, when people are literally searching Ina Realtor, all of these are gonna come up. You also wanna find your niche. Because there are so many users on TikTok, you want to be a expert in your field. And that is going to be not just real estate, but something that you are truly dedicated to. So for example, um, Herbert's been doing a series on financing and kind of, you know, paying yourself as part of your, your business. And it's been really great. And he's very passionate about sharing ideas and tips and tools for personal finance, which is great. I was talking with Rhea in the office yesterday, and she's kind of found her niche in her type of clientele. And accidentally, it can happen too. Lorena has started a YouTube channel. She's really hit the ground running with the Instagram videos. And she, you know, five or six videos in realized that she was actually talking to first time home buyers as her audience. That wasn't her plan. Her plan was kind of just to speak about real estate, but she realized the content that she was most interested in putting out actually benefited first time home buyers. So that's going to be her niche, which I thought was really cool. And as a part of that, you want to be genuine. You don't want to be forcing you know, content to, to be creative or talking about something that you're not truly interested in. So being genuine, just, you know, putting up your phone and, and talking to the other person is super important. Another thing that's super important, if you're going down the TikTok route, or you want to start posting videos on Instagram and Facebook, whatever it might be, is consistency. You're going to see you know, different engagement on videos, likes may go down, views may go down, they may go up. It's going to fluctuate. That's just social media. But if you're consistent about putting out your message, it will show. Also, I have found when I'm on TikTok and I post, you know, three, four times um, daily or sorry, in a row. So, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my videos do a lot better than if I post like once a month. Has anyone else found that just in social media engagement that if you are posting continuously, you get higher engagement than if you only post once a month? The other thing that's similar to any other type of social media is the captions. So in your captions, you know, similar to Instagram or Facebook, you're going to want to be just putting whatever it is you say in the video, whatever content that you're saying in the video, you're going to want to sum it up a bit and put it in the caption. In the caption, you also want to be putting your name, your phone number, brokerage, and maybe you have a slogan that you want to share. So all of this will be in the caption. Now, because all of this is in the caption and your username probably has your name in it, one of my key tips is do not start the video by introducing yourself. A lot of people will get on their phone and, you know, go to post a video and introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Michelle Gilmore with Realty Executives. And today I'm going to, no. You have three seconds to grab someone in a video. If you are introducing yourself and saying what you're going to be talking about, you've already lost them. 
Just get to the point. Trust me, it will do a lot better. If you are talking about community, let's say I'm going to be talking about my community. My name is in my username, on my TikTok, on my Instagram, et cetera. My information, what brokerage I'm at is in my caption. What I want to be spending time on is just the topic in the video. If they want to get more information, it's in the caption. So don't worry about that. Just get to the point. The other great thing about TikTok, and I found this on Instagram Reels, but mostly on TikTok, is trending audio. So a lot of the audio, they can be songs, and that's great. And if you add an audio to your video, it will be you know filtered in if that audio does well. But one of the great things about the audios is that they can spark ideas. So last week, I was scrolling on TikTok and, you know, it's the brokerage one. So it's, you know, mostly real estate. And I saw this one realtor and she had a video and the audio was, it just said, post a myth and then post a fact. I was like, oh, I, you know, never really thought about that. So I just did like a, a generic one. Like, I think it was the myth is that in, you know, the real estate courses, the myth is that they teach you everything about being a realtor. That's not entirely true. And I know a lot of people know that, but I figured, you know, the audio prompted me to put a myth and a fact. So let's go ahead. It did so well. And I was shocked. It was just something that I came across as like, oh, I'll participate in this trending audio. And it did really well, mostly because people wanted to engage with it. It was short. It was to the point. And they kind of already knew the answer, but it's nice to engage with people who can say, oh, that's so true. Or I already knew that. People just like to, to share it like that. But your audios will be set up the same as Instagram or Facebook. So if you're going to post something, you choose your video or you record your video at the top, there's going to be an ad sound section. And that's where you're going to choose the type of music or sound that you, you want to choose from. Now the downloads is kind of where this easy video editor hack comes in. So if you're on TikTok and you're posting a video, or you're creating a video, let's say. So you have your video, you pick your sound, that's great. In the top right corner, there's gonna be an arrow pointing down and a line. And if you click on that, it will actually download the video to your phone without the TikTok watermark, which is important. So then this video can then be shared on Instagram and Facebook. A lot of people will post on TikTok and they'll, you know, save the video to their phone after the video is downloaded. TikToks that have the watermark on them do not do well on Instagram and Facebook. They're competing companies and they don't want to be sharing all that logo and information and whatnot. But if you download the video before you post on TikTok, you don't have to worry about the watermark and you have a like great edited video for you to use anywhere. So when you're creating that video in the top right corner, arrow down, line, that little icon, you're gonna click on that and it's gonna download to your phone, which I thought was really cool. Now, before we get into the live demo, does anyone wanna workshop any ideas? Was there some a piece of old content that you had that you thought, well, I wish I could make this into a TikTok, but I don't know how, or maybe someone's, another realtor's TikTok that you saw that you thought maybe you wanted to kind of workshop around that idea? Any cool stories you want to share about TikTok so far? I'll give you one idea if you don't have any. Well, I'll actually give you 15, but. So, ch so chat GPT. <clears throat> chat GPT is fantastic. I, huge advocate for chat GPT. 
And on Friday, Ina came into the office and she wanted to record some videos. And she kind of gave me a general understanding of, you know, the topic that she wanted. So I said, okay, I can help write a, a script, so to speak. So I, you know, put our prompt into chat GPT and she did one on her end and we got fantastic ideas. She got a fantastic script and it, it was just a really great session. And all we needed to focus on was shooting the content instead of writing it. At this point, I don't need to spend my time writing content or editing content. ChatGPT does it for me. So as you can see in this prompt, I said, write 15 30 second TikTok video ideas. And I positioned myself, you know, as a realtor, who my audience is. It's important to tell ChatGPT where you're coming from so that it can write according to that. So it prompts out 15 ideas. Now, that being said, some of them are going to be, you know, similar. Some of them may be the same and worded differently. It's not, you know, perfect. But if you can go in and, and pick 10, if you can go in and edit accordingly, the next thing that you can do is actually ask it to write a script and captions for each of these, which is really cool. So if you're in chat GPT and you've started a chat, so if you write this um, prompt and you have all these 15 ideas come out in the same chat, not a new chat, in the same chat just below this, you'll have you know, a write a response bar. In that section, you can actually tell it how to edit the previous answer that it gave. It will save all the information in that chat in its brain. And if you say, you know, rewrite it or rewrite number eight, it will rewrite number eight. If you say, write me a script for one through five, it will do that. It's really cool. Anyone have any questions about chat GPT and script writing? No. All right. Are we ready live demo man? Yep. Hi, Michelle. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question. Like we can just uh, uh, copy and paste these ideas from the chat GPT? Yeah, I would definitely recommend um, copy and pasting them into a Google Doc or a Word Doc, and then you can edit it from there. So that's what All I right. do. I always just copy paste and I paste it into my Word Doc. I will say when you're pasting, you're going to have the oh. option to paste or paste without formatting. You always, from ChatGPT, want to paste without formatting, or else you're going to get like all the gray boxes and, and, text like that. So if you paste without formatting, it will actually just write it the way that you would write in a regular Google Doc, and then you can edit from there. All right, thank you. Yeah, of course. Now, the only reason I say that is because none of us, I don't think, are going to be using this on, you know, any academic papers or essays, because then I would worry about, you know, turn it in and we don't want that. But if you're just talking about writing a script for your video or writing a caption for your your Instagram or TikTok, absolutely, you just copy and paste that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. Did anyone else have any questions? And there's going to be you know more time for questions later, and I'm going to stick around if anyone wants to kind of run through a, a demo themselves. But if we don't have any more questions, Herbert, you ready to go? All right, there you go. So Michelle asked me to do this and I'm just trying to figure out, well, what do I say? What do I do? And um, the TikTok dance is out of the question, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and then I try to figure out, well, what do I know? And because of all the history I have and everything that I've done, I'm like, wait a second, I could talk about that. I can talk about my experience as a small business owner. Uh, I, I know for a fact, all of us have stories that we can tell about something that we've done in the past, uh, successes, failures, and all of that kind of things. 
And that's what people would love to consume on TikTok. They love stories. They love to hear about something um, and learn something from that. So um, I, I, it popped in my head the idea of that when I had a small business, and that's what I'm going to talk about here on, on camera now. So uh, I could do it with my hand, but because I had coffee, it's going to be a little jiggly. So I'm going to, I just have it on a stand here, but you, you know, you can do it by hand. You can do it however you want to do it. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I opened up the app itself directly. You can do this on video and then upload the video into the app. Um, I just think I'm pretty sure that TikTok prefers that you use the video settings in its app itself. I'm sure you'll get better views and all of that. So this is unscripted. This is not, I haven't, I still don't know what I'm going to say, but I'm just going to be genuine and talk to the camera as if I'm talking to somebody that's in the room with me and we're going to go from there. So bear with me, a little nervous. I got to take the glasses off. When I was a small business owner, there was ups and downs during that time in my business. There was great months and bad months. And I always wondered why I was struggling when I had great months, when I made $20,000 in one month. Why is it that I was still living paycheck to paycheck until a owner of a business who's been in business for 40 plus years came up to me and he said, for every one bad month you have, it takes three months to recoup that one bad month. So if you're a small business owner and you're struggling, it's not necessarily you, it's that bad time that you had, that one bad sales day, that one bad week, one bad month, it's gonna take three times the effort to recoup what you did. So follow along, I'm gonna help you along with this. That's it. Okay. So, first of all, thank you so much for doing that. Since seeing your videos with James Taylor, I knew, you know, your announcer voice, it was there. I was ready for it. Um, but some things that I picked up just out of the video um, that I want to talk about. So, first of all, no introduction. You're talking directly to that person. Really, really great. Um, your phone, your video is going to be you're exchanging a conversation with someone in the palm of their hand. And I think that's a key piece to keep in mind because we want to be personal. We want that interaction to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation because that's what it is. A lot of people think that by posting a video, you're posting to like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people all the time. And if you kind of break it down and realize that you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, albeit virtually and probably not at the same time, it makes the videos a lot more genuine just like that. So that was really great. Um, your niche, your niche just happened to be small business owners. You, as you said, you're just speaking genuinely from the heart about something that you know of. And if you were to hashtag that video, small business owner, who knows who might see it and realize that, you know, you actually know what you're talking about. And maybe you're knowledgeable in other things too. The one thing that I did want to talk about is when we're doing any type of um, like follow for more or anything like that, there's a way to word it that makes it a little bit more palatable for viewers, especially ones that don't already follow you. So instead of saying, you know, follow for more tips or follow along below or whatever, be specific. Say that, um, you know, next week I will be posting this video or this series is dedicated to. When you word stuff like this, you're not really telling your audience what to do, but you are acknowledging that in the future, there's gonna be more videos that they're gonna wanna listen to. Does that make sense? Yeah? Other than that, I thought it was really great. So my question is, after you record the video in TikTok, what do you do? Next, I do uh, location. 
That way people can either see that I'm in Brampton, Mississauga. In this case, I, I selected uh, Realty Executives Regional, um, <laughs> right? Because I wanna, I wanna put locations that people might look for or areas. Mississauga is a, is a great way to, to create the, the high list. Then I put in a, a one or two liner of what I'm saying in there. So that way, if people are have me on mute, they can read, well, what am I talking about today? So really all I did was I, I just put a quick, you know, two sentences there of what I said. Uh, I can also tag other people. If, um, if I'm, for example, I was, uh, I interviewed a kitchen company. So I'll tag them in some of the videos related to them. So that way my reach now goes higher. They also have the opportunity now to share that content. That's right. And it might not happen all the time, but if you tag someone, there's definitely an opportunity that they share that to their sphere. Now, if I'm recording a video and I'm, I'm talking, one of the things that I've always done is add captions. Not everyone is always gonna be in a position to be able to listen to you. They might be at work, they might be on the on the train, they don't have headphones, but instead of having them just kind of scroll past, you still want them to be able to interact with the video. So how would you put captions on your video? So there's two ways. Um, one, if you go into more options, um, there is a feature that says allow captions to auto-generate. So it will, the, the, the app itself will auto-generate the, the captions for you. If you want the words to appear on the screen as well, you would have to use a different uh, piece of software to do so. But either way it works, like somebody can just, on the app, they can just say allow captions and then captions will auto-generate anyways. Oh, what is the name of your TikTok account? Oh, look at that, I got another follower. You see that? <laughs> So for our account, ours is just Realty Executives Regional. That's what I've named all of our accounts. Um, our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, they are all the same. When I Google Realty Executives Regional, all of them come up. And as I was saying about Ina, if you have Realtor Ina, you have a very specific um, name that you want to use, definitely use it, run with it. Um, I know Herbert's is who needs to hear this. I think that's hilarious. You can also go that route, but just know that to have a better SEO with that, you want to be putting that name everywhere because people aren't automatically going to search that on TikTok and it's not going to automatically come up on a Google search unless you've tagged it in your other profiles. Right. So that's the only thing with that. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I follow a lot of people on TikTok. Um, there's a gentleman that I was telling Michelle, I, I forgot his name. I was trying to find it here. There's a gentleman who owns a rare bookstore mm. and, uh, but he never talks about his bookstore. He never talks about selling books. All he does is he'll pull a book from the shelf and present it and say, here's an 1850s book, leather bound, and just describe the book and what's in it and everything, who signed it. A lot of times he'll find books that are signed completely fascinating like you some of these videos are 10 minutes long you're just sitting there with your mouth open going this is fascinating not once does he talk about his bookstore his views are in the millions people are just salivating at this because he'll he'll present a variety of different books and it's it's just amazing to get this information and i guarantee you from those views people are clicking on his bio to go to his store to buy books. So it, it, it's, it's going to be amazing for him. Yeah, that's fabulous. And that's just finding your niche, right? Being that one go-to person for that specific, specific content. Um, now, one thing that that just reminded me of is the time allotment on TikTok. So as of, I think the beginning of this year or end of last year, TikTok now allows you to record or post up to three minute videos. Unless you are doing a sit down interview or you're doing a full on house tour where you're talking about all of the different things, you want your videos to be 60 seconds or less. 
the stats just show that after 60 seconds, and I know Herbert and I have sat through this and gone through all of our insights and all of this, we can actually track when people stop watching the video. There's full engagement up until three to five seconds, a severe drop then, and then another severe drop around the 58, 59 second mark. And that's just, that's just the general population. That's with devices now and just constant scrolling. Those are your benchmarks. You want to be either short and sweet or you want to be super engaging for up to 60 seconds. Yeah, more followers. <laughs> But yeah, so after you get all the, the captions set up, it's a very easy, very similar to Instagram or Facebook where you just click post. And then can you kind of show what your, um, your profile looks like? Now this I think we can do on, on the desktop, but I just want to show you some of the aspects of a TikTok profile um, homepage that everyone will see. Um, people can see the number of views, people can see, um, you know, your bio, your profile photo, all of that. Um, and if anyone was in the Powered by Expert series yesterday, when Kyle was talking about Facebook and Instagram and setting up your profile with your photo bio, it's very similar. Look at this handsome guy. <laughs> And, you know, what's funny is you you never know what's going to hit. And uh, there was one video I did, this one right here, uh, with 12,000 views. And all I did was just put my camera to my car door and just pan out. And I got 12,000 views on that one. I'm not even talking. It's it's wild. I remember I did, I I think just started our TikTok, TikTok channel. And it was a video of a marker. I was just mad that I got this expo marker that was green and red because I was trying to be festive. And I went to draw with it and it came out as teal and orange. And I was like, well, it's not festive. <laughs> and it's just a video of a marker. It has 35,000 views. <laughs> like I, I would love to be able to tell you that every video is going to get that many or you know, this is the exact way to make a video for it to, you know, reach that. I can't, I don't think anyone can at this point. It, I can absolutely give you some tips. There's definitely professionals out there that will, um, you know, help you schedule and, and create professional content, but you honest to God, never know what it's going to be, but being consistent and putting out valuable pieces of, of information, whether you're talking to small business owners or you're talking to first time home buyers, as long as you're being valuable, you can never go wrong. You really can. Thank you for the live demo, by the way. Um, now, after you post a video, where do you see the highest number of engagement? Is it within the first 12 hours, first 24 hours? If you could kind of talk about that. Yeah, so what I do is I'll post, and, and you know, Michelle and I were talking about this, like, when do you post? What, what's a good time? You know what? For me, it's any time is a good time. I don't, I don't schedule these things. Uh, if I have multiple videos, I will schedule them. Um, and But I'll schedule them a variety of different times. I don't, it's not a, something I'm thinking about, like, oh, I'm only posting from 10 a.m. I know that's going to be the highest engagement. I'll just post it. I always wait till the next day to look at the reports just to see what's going on and how it's done. Because I don't want to obsess over it because I don't want to check every hour and like, oh, you know, how many views that I've gotten. So I, I check the next day just to see. So far, um, Instagram has been dramatic in terms of the amount of views I've been getting. A simple video of me spinning around got over 300 views within 24 hours. Um, the kitchen one, I did, uh, uh, I put it, the long video, I put it into that AI video converter for me and it spit out a variety of different videos, I think five. And I didn't do anything with them. I just uploaded it to Instagram. I scheduled it because there were five videos already created for me. I just scheduled each one. Every day a new video was being posted 
and I got 1.9 thousand. Whoa, yeah, one mm -hmm. 1,900 people looking at it, and I didn't do anything. So so far, Instagram has been phenomenal. Um, that's where a lot of the people who are approaching me are seeing my videos. Even at the dog park on Monday, I was talking to somebody who I haven't seen in a while, and she's like, "Hey, I seen your videos on Instagram." I'm like, "Oh, make sure to like and follow," you know. <laughs> But I haven't seen her in a while. And for her to tell me that she's seeing my videos, that's, that's for me, it, that's a huge game changer. Like if somebody at a dog park away from my house is catching these, I know I'm on the right track. I know I, I got to keep on posting videos and something's going to hit something. I don't know where this is going. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing with interviews and, and the postings that I'm doing, the books. Um, I'm going to keep on going in that route. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking for another book to uh, review and go from there. Yeah. And that's something else that I want to talk about, because there needs to be an element of fun to it. Right. And if you're stressing about what time to post or what content to post or how to post, that's that's not what I want you guys to be doing. I want there to be an element of fun and. I, unfortunately, Ina's not with us today, but um, I know that we had a blast on Friday. She was able to come in and I got her all set up with kind of like a desk and a plant and a Realty Executive's backdrop. And all she had to worry about was speaking. I can help you guys set up lights and mics and any equipment that you want to use. I'm ready for you. So if you want to come into the office and say, I just want to shoot some content, but I don't know what to do, let's have a chat. Let's, you know, just start something. Um, one of the videos that Ina did that did really well is just why a realtor? And all you're really talking about is why should people work with a realtor? And you already know that. That's why you're here. So the content that you have, I, I know it's there and I know this can be daunting, but if you're in a position where you want to start video marketing and you want to start TikTok or you want to increase your marketing at all, please come see me. Please, please call me. <laughs> now, did anyone have any questions or I'm going to, I'm going to stick around on the call. If you guys either want to um, try making a TikTok on your own or posting a video even um, I'm just going to be on the call if you have any questions um, or you're trying to figure it out and I'll just be here live to, to answer anything. Um, other great ideas other than, than chat GPT is older content. Um, if, you know, you had posted something maybe, you know, let's say six months ago about first time home buyer tips, that's still relevant. Or you sent out an e-newsletter or a drip campaign. Check out the content that's actually in there. That could, you know, spark something. I'm, I'm seeing Nancy, who is up north. Um, she'll post pictures of her dogs in the, in the park, in mm -hmm. the forest. It's awesome. It's fascinating. I love seeing dogs running in the park. And I'm sure everybody who on TikTok and Instagram that are watching this is the same thing. So it's, she's not even in front of the camera. She's just posting stuff. Yeah. I will say it like it is my job to tell you that the videos that you are in, that you are in front of the camera or someone is in front of the camera do a lot better than the ones that no one is in. Just being able to see another person's face has much higher video engagement than the ones that don't. Did anyone kind of want to take a take a whack at making a, a TikTok? And by that, I, I like Herbert said, I don't mean you need to be dancing right now. I just, you know, post an old video and see what happens. I want to come, Michelle, next Wednesday. I need your guidance. Yes, in, okay, yes. In, yeah, in making videos on TikTok for TikTok. Okay, good. I, I'm a big fan of TikTok, so I will come. I'm, I'm seeing your videos. They're doing very well. I like all the um the emojis that you use. Yeah, I just just little creativity I learned from my kids. So I just always try new things. Good, good, good. And I've said that too before. I uh, you know, if you're always wondering what should I do or how should I do it, 
you have kids, if you have kids, if you have neighbors, a, a niece, nephew who is in that teen range, I guarantee you they know how to use this 10 times better than all of us put together. You know, ask them, say, hey, I, I need ideas. What should I do it? I'm telling you, they'll come up with a bunch of it. The only thing I'm a um, I'm little concerned uh, while people just posting videos and getting trolled. So that's the only shyness I have. Otherwise, yeah. I'm a big fan of TikTok videos. Yeah, there's there's a lot of um, bots and, and kind of spam comments and stuff yeah. like that. I know I get them on our Instagram videos and tic- not so much TikTok, but I get them a lot on Instagram. And yeah. I just delete them. Like at the end of the day, they don't know you. They, you know, are it's probably just spam anyways. Lots of real, realtors, they are dancing on TikTok even. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. We do have lots of dancing realtors these days. Yes. Um, and, you know, if, if that's something that you want to do, that that is a fun aspect for anyone um, that is wanting to to get into TikTok, do it. Like, No, but I, I'm following you. You are doing amazing because oh, you funny, funny videos. I love your videos. Oh, thank I always you. Watch. I enjoy your videos. Yeah, I was actually saying to uh to Herbert the other day, um I have a family member that has a team with a different brokerage and we were chatting the other day and he said, "Um, you know, my agents are seeing your videos, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I know they follow me." <laughs> yeah, you're doing amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you can do uh the ones that I like too. I, I follow a lot of realtors in Florida and Texas, because I love seeing their homes. I love seeing, you know, what $600,000 will get you in Texas and it's bonkers. And I love watching those videos. So you can do videos like that. Just, they're not even showing themselves. They're like, Hey, today we have a four bedroom and they're just walking through the house talking about the different features and finishes and all that simple video. Yeah. Yeah. There's tons of good ideas. Um, chat GPT, or even if you're following a lot of realtors, um, just scrolling through and, and doing exactly that, seeing what they're up to. And chat GPT is just like a Google, like you can have everything. It is. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. It is a very helpful tool. Yes. I was a little weary at first. I was like, you know, I, I got this. I don't need this. I don't need the assistance. It, it, it's like a hu- human responding, not a computer. It's like a human yeah. responding. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I've seen so many people actually prompt it to, you know, write a song with a specific tune in mind or write a children's book with this theme. And it does it and it's fantastic. And I want to know about the thread that app is I just very new to me. Is that like uh, linked with the Instagram? Yes, Threads is linked with Instagram. Um, It is the Mark Zuckerberg version of Twitter. Okay. And so he owns Meta, which which is Facebook and Instagram, and now Threads. I will tell you, since its launch two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago, um, the user activity has significantly decreased. It was and still is the most quickly downloaded app ever. Now that being said, the user activity has plummeted. People are definitely going back to Twitter. Um, it is it's exactly Twitter. So if you've ever been on Twitter, it's very much like a, a lot of people refer to it as a giant group chat. It's not as professional with, you know, just sold or just listed or any of that. It's more of the, um, you know, talking about parts of your day that have happened or crazy stories or um, little anecdotes like um, coffee and closing deals type of day. Like that would be a a thread or a tweet. Um, So it's definitely something to check out because we never know. It's still very new. Um, It still could increase in activity, Um, but people have definitely kind of floated back to Twitter Mm -hmm. and threads is somewhere where you're just going to be connecting with your community and connecting with um, other realtors 
Now I had posted something in the threads last week and I actually had one of our realty executives agents in Vegas like the thread and comment and ask about, you know, Toronto and regional. And um, so now I know for anyone that wants to go to Vegas, Jody will happily show you around <laughs> and give you all the places to go. And so for that, I think it, it definitely has the opportunity to be good. But again, it's not something to stress over. Um, the cool thing is that if you download threads and sign in with your Instagram, it will automatically follow everyone that you follow on Instagram. So that's really cool. Um, it will also automatically pull your profile picture, your um, bio, all of that, and set it up for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Yeah. But it's definitely, um, you know, threads is, threads would be text. Instagram would be photos is how I like to put it. Okay. Have you downloaded threads? Is that something that you've done? I, I downloaded it yesterday, but um, uh, I'm not familiar with, because there's so many apps I have, but I'm not using just two apps. TikTok, Facebook is, I think I spend most of my time. And I think my, like half of my day just spent on these two apps. And <laughs> I'm not using rest of the apps because it's like, you need a lot of time for these apps. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we can do definitely when we meet too, um, it's kind of batch record. So we can create um, longer videos or multiple short videos. And then I'll be able to actually help you schedule them as well. This is a really kind of hard service to share over Zoom. So I definitely recommend anyone that's able to please come into the office. Yeah, I want to learn from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if you are kind of in a similar boat and you're not able to make it into the office just because of your location or, or whatnot, um, please let me know and we'll definitely set something up. Um, it'll be more of an interactive Zoom call one-on-one -on -one where you know I'm going to ask you to share your... Um, like turn your phone so I can see and all of that. So if you are able to come into the office, definitely do that. Um, it's super fun. And we also have new coffee mugs for anyone that has not been in the office lately. They're very beautiful, <laughs> um, but we can also use them as props, right? So yeah. it's a bit more of a professional setting. Yes. Uh, yeah so it'll be fun we'll definitely we'll definitely get that done. i just changed my um uh, uh my my tiktok uh uh name just you told me and then i just change it and you know that's that was good. very helpful good yeah. as yeah that's as long as people can take at least one thing from these sessions i love that and anita and herbert and i were talking earlier and said you know Last week, our kind of topic of conversation was threads and Instagram and Facebook. But from that, Anita and Herbert were able to connect and talk about Facebook Marketplace. And while that was not, you know, the topic that, you know, the theme of the day, that's kind of just where the conversation went. And they were able to collaborate after the session on, on something else, which I thought was really cool. Um, and I know James and Herbert have been, you know, knocking it out of the park with video marketing and James's new listing. So I'm very happy about that. Um, but yeah, it's just getting, you know, collaborative work done and and kind of upping our game. Yes. Yeah. Did anyone want to talk about anything else? Or is anyone, you know, right now working on a TikTok that they want to talk about? Even I didn't know about that video we can save and then we can use without, uh, you know, that uh, TikTok uh, logo. So the, it's it's really good idea that yeah, we can that's... use that videos anywhere. So I didn't know that even. <laughs> I think they try not to tell you. They try to keep it a secret, but. Yeah, it, it, it is good, actually. Yeah, it's a good one. That's what I've been doing. So that way I don't have to, you know, remake the video on Instagram and I just download it once and I post it everywhere. And TikTok is like an app. You can make so much creativity. You can create yeah. so many things. It's a wonderful app. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been really good. Yeah. 
Any questions, any activity that we want to share? No? All right, well, I'll be here. You guys are, you know, free to go, free to stay. But I'll be here working on my own TikToks. I'm ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for uh, for joining today. And I hope I see you guys next week. Okay. Michelle, thank you so much for this Welcome. meeting. It's always it's always very informative and it's fun. Oh, good. Glad. Yeah. I'll see you soon. See you. Bye. Bye.